In today's video, we are throwing it back to when the zoo first opened by visiting some animals that were among the first to be housed at the National Zoo. So let's see some animals that have been here over a hundred years. The zoo started because of one particular animal. Or really the lack of that animal. For a little context, in the 1880s, a taxidermist named William Hornaday went to the western United States expecting to see thousands and thousands of bison and then he shows up and there weren't any and he was completely shocked. When Hornaday realized that there were hardly any bison, he decided to go ahead and try to save not only bison but animals in general from extinction. What's really funny about this is Hornaday brought the animals to live on the National Mall. So yes, the first National Zoo was on the National Mall and I just cannot picture that now just walking down the National Mall and seeing all of these animals that would just literally be a zoo. Let's see the animal that started it all. And before we do that, just to clarify, buffalo and bison are two different animals. Buffalo are native to Africa and Asia, and bison are found in North America and Europe. Before 1800, there were up to 100 million bison roaming America. But by the 1890s, there were less than a thousand left on the continent. In true U.S. fashion, the U.S. government tried to eradicate all bison in order to destroy the livelihood of plain Indians. And now they are making an effort to conserve these animals. We are learning that bison basically move in slow motion. They're pretty chill animals. Hornaday knew how to pick them because this next animal is so lovable. They're adorable, super tough, and they love to talk. Their vocabulary is more advanced than any other animal language that's been decoded. They make squeaky, high-pitched calls that are incredibly descriptive. For instance, prairie dogs can alert one another that not only is there a human approaching, but there's a human with a blue hat and a blue hoodie approaching. Wow. Do you think they were talking about us when we know. saw them? I don't know. They could have been. Oh my gosh. Check this out. <laughs> I did not expect the animal I would get the closest to today is just a white-tailed deer just hanging out at the zoo. Now for an animal I am not a fan of, but for the sake of history, let's check it out. Alligators were a part of the original Animal House, which opened in 1892. The Animal House was actually the first permanent building at the National Zoo. If they weren't threatening enough, apparently alligators never stop growing and then when their teeth get worn down, they just fall out and are replaced by sharper teeth. Okay, I never thought I would say this, but it's kind of cute. It's just laying here sleeping. Now for one of the sweetest animals in the entire zoo. The zoo's first elephants came from a circus. In 1891, a locally based circus that used to keep its animals here at the zoo during the winter decided to just permanently give the zoo two elephants. And their names were Dunk and Gold Dust. That's, That's so, cute. I know. How fun is that? <laughs> they got their own elephant house here in 1903. These elephants are too funny. At first glance, they're just walking around eating, and then the more you stare at them, like the weirder <laughs> their behavior is. It is super cool to see an elephant this close though. I mean, it's you can just see like how weathered the skin is and the tusks and everything. It's, it's pretty amazing. This next animal is so cute, but it could kill you like that. I know they're big, ferocious beasts, but they look so adorable when they're sleeping. Lions live twice as long in captivity, which makes sense when you hear about all of the drama that happens within a pride. A pregnant lioness will give birth to a cub away from the rest of the pride, and then once the cub is born, she and the cub or cubs will just hang out and hide from the rest of the pride for about six weeks. When a male lion takes over a pride, it can kill all of the existing cubs just to make the females go into heat again. This allows the new males to breed and raise their own offspring. Now that we know that about lions, I'm glad we are only seeing the females today, just so that no funny business happens and everyone's safe and sound. Shortly before elephants came into the picture, the zoo got the most American animal you can think of. Everyone's having the same reaction we are. They're like, this doesn't look like a bald eagle. We think it's a fledgling, so it's a younger bald eagle, which is why its head's not super white yet, but mm -hmm. very majestic. Yeah, it's cool because the only bald eagles I've seen in person are like 
fully grown adult bald eagles with the typical colors you think of mm -hmm. when you imagine a bald eagle. So it's actually really cool to see a fledgling. The birdhouse was completed in 1902 and housed golden and bald eagles. The bald eagle has been the national symbol of America since 1782, but in the 1960s they were dropping like flies because they were consuming a pesticide called DDT. Once DDT was banned and eagles were protected under the Endangered Species Act, eagle numbers soared. Get it? Today, bald eagles are not housed in the birdhouse. They're housed on the American Trail, but we're about to go to a brand new facility just for birds. Hands down, this new birdhouse has been my favorite part of the zoo so far today. Oh my god, they even have mist machines? You know, I'm in the process of trying to spot all the birds I can. I could really see myself becoming a bird watcher when I retire. <laughs> I must say it's very interesting to come here and look at the same type of animals that people looked at 100 years ago. Like, in some ways nothing has changed, and then in other ways it's changed dramatically. Yeah, and seeing animals such as the bison, I'm really glad that, you know, some people stepped up to conserve them. Yeah, I mean, sometimes living in captivity like lions is much better for them, and the zoo takes great care of them. Which animal did you find the most interesting? Definitely comment below and let us know. And as always, thanks for watching. Bye. I see myself becoming a... <clears throat> becoming a bird. <laughs> ...1982, but in the 19... What? Okay.